Hey guys, it's Max. Welcome to part one of the three-part series of my Mac Pro Killer build. I was very impressed with the Mac Pro and I actually ordered one and the order didn't uh, work out because of how small it was and how portable it was. I've been spending quite a long time lugging around big heavy laptops because I need something portable but that also has some power for video editing and stuff like that. So I know a lot of people hate it on the Mac Pro. I really like it. Um, but I had some time to think about and plan and look around to see if I can build something as powerful or more powerful for the same amount of money while still being portable. At first I didn't think I could do it. Um, then later I realized after having time to wait uh, for the Mac Pro line to come down, it's currently on a two month uh, order list. Um, I figured I could make one and I have, it's right here. It's right next to me, so it's already built. Um, I'm already using it, I'm already loving it. And I'm putting out these videos for you guys. If you're interested in making something that's small, um, or maybe even you don't need it to be portable, but you still want something that's small and it's gonna be powerful, and you're not gonna spend as much as a Mac Pro, uh, this video is for you guys. So part one is just uh, the parts that I chose and why. So let's look at those. All right guys, to start out, I have the case. It's a Rosewill Legacy U3. I have a video on this, so go check that out. It's a very small, super lightweight, all aluminum case that fits everything I need, uh, even though it's kind of tight. But I love the look of this case. Uh, it only has one 120 millimeter fan in the back, but it's still gonna work out fine for me. Next, we have the Intel i7-4930K. This is the newest six core that Intel put out. This is super important for your video editing build. It's what sets it apart from other computers. Uh, if you're gonna be editing, you need the performance of a six core to be able to handle multiple HD or even 4K streams. So this is why I chose this processor. Now, Intel six core processors don't come with coolers, which is perfect because you shouldn't use it anyways. This is the HADI by Corsair. It's a 120 millimeter all-in-one water cooling kit that works really well. The radiator is actually a little bit thicker than most with two fans with a push-pull setup. This is what's gonna keep the processor cool and allow me to overclock. Next, I got the Arctic MX4 thermal compound. This thing lasts forever and it performs really well. It's worth investing 10 extra dollars on getting the best thermal compound you can get. Next is another super important part of your video editing build, it's the graphics card. This can greatly accelerate your video editing and I have the GTX Titan Black Edition. Now I got this card because it has six gigabytes of RAM and I'm gonna be doing 4K editing so it's gonna be super important. If you're doing 1080p video editing, I would suggest going this with the 780 Ti. Now that's just about as powerful as this card but it just has less uh, RAM which is totally fine if you're doing 1080p editing. For memory, I went with 32 gigs of G-Skill 1866 RAM. Now this is super important for video editing programs as they'll use as much as you can give them. Get at least 32 gigs, 64 if you can pull it off. I can only put 32 gigs on this motherboard. For storage, I have two SSDs and two standard hard drives and it's all gonna fit inside the case. A 250 gig for the operating system and programs, a 120 gig for all the scratch files for video editing, and two three terabyte hard drives running in RAID 0 for maximum performance. These are gonna hold all my video files and all my other media. Now I will be running Windows 8.1. I don't mind the changes that they've made and there's actually a performance gain over Windows 7. As for the motherboard, I have this Asus Rampage 4 Gene. Now this was really my only option uh, that would actually hold a six core processor, give me four slots for my 32 gigs of RAM, and still be in a micro ATX form factor to fit inside the small size case. It's kind of on the pricey side, and it's the most expensive motherboard I've ever purchased, but for a build like this, when I want maximum performance in a small size, it's absolutely essential. It has a bunch of other features that um, work really well as well. To power this computer is a Corsair RM650 power supply. It's gonna give me plenty of power. It's gold rated. It's ultra quiet. Most of the time the fan doesn't even run, and when it does, it's ultra quiet. And it's also fully modular, so I only use the cables that I need, and it's gonna help me cut down on all those extra wires inside of the case. All right guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, go ahead and give me a like below. It only takes about two seconds of your time and that helps me out. Also, if you would have gotten a different part instead of something I chose, write that below in the description. I'd love to hear all your guys' opinions and maybe that would help somebody else out. And if you want to see part two, which is me building the computer, and part three, which is the proof that this computer actually does what it says it does, uh, make sure you subscribe so you guys don't miss those videos. And also, last but not least, there's links in the description to the parts so you guys, if you want to do some research, check those out. It'll be right below. So thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful day. See ya.